you have successfully proven that your soil bacterial isolate produced an antimicrobial compound because of the zone of inhibition you saw around the escape pathogen. In science, we replicate our results in order to confirm that we really saw what we thought we saw. The next step is for us to confirm these positive results. We call this proof plating. There are three techniques that have been introduced by the Small World Initiative community of students, and we anticipate that there are more novel methods to come. In this video, we will introduce you to these three methods, and we encourage you to either use one of these methods or to think of your own and share it with other students. For lack of a better name, I call the first method patch-proof plating. On the plate, you will spread your escape pathogen that you used for the spread plating method. Let me remind you that I will refer to it as the escape pathogen, when in reality we only used the safe relatives of each pathogen in lab. You will now transfer your soil bacterial isolate in addition to a positive control and a negative control. The positive control is a bacterium that produces a zone of inhibition against this escape pathogen. The negative control is one that does not produce a zone of inhibition to the pathogen. The lab instructor will indicate what positive control we will be using in lab. This is a bacterial isolate that has been tested against the escape pathogen under the same conditions that you are using it, and it has previously demonstrated a zone of inhibition. For the negative control, we ask you to use your own. You have previously tested all of the soil bacterial isolates on your master plate, and you have noticed that some of them did not produce a zone of inhibition against your escape pathogen. Choose one of these from your master plate as the negative control. Gather your materials around you so that you don't have to move around once you begin plating. Obtain a sterile petri plate that contains the same media that you previously used to show a zone of inhibition. Take some sterile toothpicks, swabs, your master plate, and the positive control. Label your new plate with your name, date, media type, and incubation temperature. In the center of the plate, using a sterile swab, spread some of the escape pathogen in a circle about the size of a large coin. Look closely at the plate so that you can see the edge of the circle that you just drew with the swab. You will want to transfer your bacteria as close to this line as possible so that as the bacteria grow, they will come into contact with one another and a zone of inhibition can be seen. I would like you to transfer each sample twice to this plate so that you have replicates on the same plate. It is best to transfer them across from each other on the plate. First, transfer the positive control. Whether you use a toothpick on a solid culture or a swab from liquid culture, try to place the positive control as close to the line of the escape pathogen as possible. Discard the toothpick or swab each time in order to reduce the risk of contamination. Now do the same thing with the negative control. Choose one of the colonies from your master plate and with the toothpick transfer a small amount to the petri plate. Again, try to place it as close to the escape pathogen as possible. Finally, Using a new sterile toothpick, pick the colony from your master plate that demonstrated a zone of inhibition from your previous experiment. Place it as close to the escape pathogen as possible. That's it. Turn the plate over and incubate. This next method is named turtle tracks due to the fact that it resembles the tracks that a sea turtle leaves on the sand. Obtain a sterile petri plate that contains the same media that you previously used to show a zone of inhibition. Take some sterile toothpicks, swabs, your master plate, and the positive control. Label your new plate with your name, the date, media type, and incubation temperature. Using a sterile swab, collect a sample of your escape pathogen. Draw a straight line on the auger surface of the clean plate. Look closely so that you can see the edges of the line of pathogen. You will alternate your samples on either side of this line. Now, transfer some of the positive control and place it as close to the line of pathogen as possible. Then, apply another sample of the positive control 
on the opposite side of this line and a little further down. Now apply the negative control in similar fashion. Take a sample from one of your soil isolates that has not shown a zone of inhibition against this pathogen on any of your prior plates. With a sterile toothpick, transfer the negative control by placing it as close to the line as possible. Then apply another sample on the opposite side of the pathogen line. Finally, do the same with the proof, using a sample from the master plate of the soil bacterial isolate in which you had previously shown a zone of inhibition against this pathogen. Replace the lid, turn this plate over, and incubate. The third method is named wagon wheel. It will have the pathogen as the hub of the wagon wheel with the samples radiating away as spokes. Obtain a sterile petri plate that contains the same media that you previously used to show a zone of inhibition. Take some sterile toothpicks, swabs, your master plate, and the positive control. Label your new plate with your name, today's date, media type, and the incubation temperature. In the center of the plate, using a sterile swab, spread some of the escape pathogen in a circle about the size of a large coin. Look closely at the plate so that you can see the edge of the circle that you just drew with the swab. You will want to transfer your bacteria as close to this line as possible so that as the bacteria grow they will come into contact with one another and a zone of inhibition can be seen. Using the same swab, now draw another circle midway between the first circle of pathogen and the outer edge of the plate. It should look like the planet Saturn with a ring around it. Take a sterile toothpick and touch it to the positive control that the instructor has given you. Start close to the hub of the wheel next to the line of the pathogen and transfer some of your sample to the auger surface. Then drag the toothpick towards the edge of the plate and as you do so you will drag it through the outer ring of the pathogenic bacteria that you have previously spread. Discard this toothpick. Obtain a new sterile toothpick and do this again on the opposite side of the plate using the same positive control. With a new sterile toothpick, choose the negative control from your master plate. This is one of the bacterial isolates that has not previously shown a zone of inhibition on any of your spread plates. Touch the toothpick to your bacterial colony then transfer it as close to the hub of the wheel as you can without touching the pathogen. Drag the toothpick towards the edge of the plate and as you do so, you will drag it through the outer ring that you produced with the pathogen. Discard this toothpick and do the same thing with the negative control at a different location on the plate. Finally, Using a sterile toothpick, choose the colony that has shown a zone of inhibition in which you are trying to prove on this plate. Touch the top of the colony and transfer it to the new plate, placing a sample as close to the hub of the wheel as possible. Then, drag the toothpick towards the edge of the plate and through the line of pathogen you have previously made. Do this again at a different spot on the plate as a replicate of the first one. Replace the lid, turn the plate over, and incubate.